Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to uh, this edition of National Matters. I'm your pastor, Pastor Moses Chilova, and on the program I have a uh, president of FDD, President Edith Nawakwe. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Chiluba. Mm -hmm. uh, this week is a very unusual week. Mm. We've lost uh, two very, very dedicated Zambians. Our mm. former Speaker of the National Assembly, uh, Speaker Musa Mwanamu Ambwa. And, mm. uh, you know, uh, this is a person who was a dedicated public servant, very firm and fair. Mm. For those of us who grew under his watch, we, we really miss him. I remember days in the house when you stand up to speak, he would obviously know that uh, you haven't been to the library. And he would advise, have you been to the library? All the reforms you see around the parliament, uh, the public broadcasting of debates, Mm. The resource centers, constituency uh, offices, those were started under his watch. Mm. We truly miss him. Again, we've lost uh, our brother, uh, Dr. M Magande. And uh, it's really sad that, uh, you know, in a space of a few days, Zambia has really lost mm -hmm. people who were the guiding light for those who needed to learn something. Mm. Magande was like a teacher. Mm. Even when you read his books, even when you listen to his speeches, even when you consult him, this was a teacher that we really needed to continue his path of imparting knowledge to the younger generation. Mm. We've truly lost uh, our leaders, uh -huh. and, uh, may their souls rest in peace. May God really comfort the families of uh, our two elders. Um, during the time of uh, Amosa Mwanamwambwa, Parliament, though it was not on TV like we are <clears throat> watching now, you don't equate it to the late Nabuliato, uh, um, the tough decisions. It was difficult to know where those people stood. They would not favor the ruling party or the opposition. They just uh, went for the law. What made uh, the difference? Because these two speakers, they stand out. Uh, Amosa Mwanamu and Robinson Nabuliato. I have the rare privilege of having served as a young parliamentarian under the watch of late Dr. Nabuliato. Mm. And uh, as I've just said, there were more of people whom, who stood up for the dignity of the house. Mm -hmm. These are people you never even, uh, as a young uh, parliamentarian, thought that they were working under the government. Because mm -hmm. we actually, as we walked into parliament, felt the air of independence. Mm -hmm. the, the, the independence of the house. Mm. And um, whether you were a cabinet minister and uh, it was rare to get a commendation in terms of notes from uh, uh, Speaker Nabuliato, but uh, I, I recall at one time I was speaking and he sent me a handwritten note and said, well done. I remember uh, uh, Amusa Manamuamba worked under extremely difficult conditions. Mm. I think that you recall that uh, in his time, that was a time of uh, transition from people breaking away from uh, MMD to uh, PF to mm. other parties. But when we walked into the house, you never felt the division of political parties. Mm. In fact, 
Amusa mwana mwamba, mm -hmm. uh, some of us uh, popularly called him Uncle Amusa, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, was a disciplinarian. But uh, a disciplinarian in the sense of getting you to follow the line. Mm -hmm. But uh, whenever it came to a position where even as backbenchers, because uh, under uh, late uh, Amusa Mwanamuamba was a backbencher, uh, we felt that we were in the opposition. He always came to your help. Mm. There was never that uh, what you see now where the speaker is obviously mm. aligning with the government. You never saw that with uh, 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 Speaker Mwanamuamba. And, uh, and I think that's what upholds the division and mm. separation of powers, if the speaker can say, this is my territory, mm. never, never would anyone be picked up from the precinct of parliament. Mm. Never. It would never happen under Musa Mwanamwambo. You could not get a police officer walking through the gates to pick up a, a, a parliamentarian. <laughs> you could never, you could never, ever expect, even when the president was brokering something, you mm. would not see that humiliation that the speaker must be humiliated to the point where you obviously as onlookers feel that the speaker is under pressure. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we've seen that with, um, I mean, especially in the current parliament, that uh, truly you don't know whether the speaker is a cabinet minister mm -hmm. or in fact uh, one who stands for the separation of powers. Mm. Uh, truly, if people needed to learn, they should have uh, gone back to the archives and the library and look at uh, the rulings of uh, Speaker Nabudiato, Speaker Mwanamwamba on issues that related to interaction between the opposition, the backbench, mm. and, uh, and, uh, <coughs> and the executive. Uh, as a backbench, I worked, I worked also as a backbench when uh, I was uh, at the back, mm. and, and we debated freely. And you could feel that uh, if you just stand up and start to talk carelessly, the speaker will guide you and say, have you been to the library? Mm. Have you been to the library? Mm. And, and, and he always encouraged the MPs to go to the library, go and research that topic, go and research. But now you see when they are debating, really, some of us don't even tune to uh, parliamentary uh, radio because, you know, because really we worked under the arrangements when people like uh, the Honorable Vincent Malambo, mm. the Honorable um, uh, Ben Mwinga, mm. the Honorable the Joshua Rumina, mm. the Honorable Fitzpatrick Chula, when they stood up to speak, mm. when uh, uh, the Honorable Eric Siluamba stood up to speak, you could feel a pin drop. Mm. And it would be with facts. Mm. So you sit in the house to listen, to learn, to absorb. Mm. And the dignity of the house was upheld by the speaker. Mm. And the speaker uh, presented the iptom of the separation of powers. I, and truly we've lost uh, a leader in the Amusa uh, Mwanamwamba, not only a leader, I say a teacher, because some of us grew, we went to parliament, we didn't know how to research, and they mm. took us through this. They always tell you, have you been to the library? Do your research. And you knew, like a student, that if you walk into the house, and you are talking from nowhere, <laughs> obviously, that is you the, could see the, the uncomfort in the chair that, look, yeah. can you go and do more work? Was uh, the uh, library you're talking about, it's the parliamentary library? Parliamentary library. It's a, it's How a, others debated the other cases and all this, is that what? Yes, I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, when the speaker says, look, according to asking me, this, it's like going to church when you're at parliament. Mm. Uh, to church you use a Bible. Mm -hmm. In parliament you use a book called asking me. It's, a, it's a, the wealth of knowledge in the Commonwealth parliamentary system. But you look at our current MPs, 
they will be talking about you know point of order but it's basically out of order <laughs> they haven't read the general <laughs> orders they haven't read the style that a, a commonwealth parliament parliamentary must mm. debate so but you see it goes with the leadership in the house uh, mps we come from places like nakonde uh, mm. having come from a, a, a very humble background you go to parliament and you must be taken through the system by the clerk by the speaker but it also requires interest mm. in your work uh, just as a cabinet minister you are appointed to a cabinet post you must rely on the uh, cabinet office mm. to get you through the system so truly these were leaders and uh, you know uh, when uh, when they walked through those revolving doors mm. you knew that authority is coming in mm. and I, I mean uh, life is such that uh, we lose the best when i watch uh, zambian parliament today um Sometimes it's not different from South African Parliament, where Julius <laughs> Maleba and his people and all this, you tend to think like there is circus, you know. And uh, sometimes you tend to lose focus on what are they debating about, uh, you know. It, it, <clears throat> it's the leadership. I mean, you, you worked under uh, uh, Amusa Manamamba as a member and of parliament, uh, but, uh, and, uh, and Dr. Mativini, you see the etiquette, the knowledge, the, the, the depth. Mm. I mean, uh, if you talk about uh, late uh, uh, speaker Amusa Manamamba or late Naburiato, that's, that's, that's the wealth of knowledge. If you talk about uh, Dr. Mativini, mm. I mean, he plows through books. So, and then you talking about their deputies. Mm. You recall uh, Honorable Chifumu Band, State Council, mm. as the chair. So there's, there's dignity around the, the leadership. Mm. But when you have uh, just anyone appointed, they don't spend the time to understand their work just because you come from a political party, <coughs> I think it's unfortunate. And... Uh, uh, lest I be cited for contempt of the House, mm. uh, but I'm a, I'm a former, I'm, I'm uh, once a member of Parliament, you're forever a member of Parliament, I'm a member mm. of the uh, uh, Commonwealth Parliamentary Association. Uh, and and what, we, what I'm saying is a matter of concern. We mm. need our House to deliberate issues related to the livelihood of our people. Mm. For example, this is November, next week. We decry the fact that the presidency says that uh, next year, Mirimiu, the issues that we are grappling with of hunger will be in the past. Mm. The House is not raising the issues about where is the fertilizer, where is the seed. Where are the systems in place? Mm. And, and, and these are issues where members of parliament from the back bench should go into the house with a private member's motion mm -hmm. to nudge government to do something. In our time, we could nudge government to rescind mm. privatization of Zanako. In our time, I mean, uh, I recall I moved a motion to say, look, uh, if 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 pigs if 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 pigs can't if we as human beings can't eat maize, even pigs can't eat it. Mm. Uh, and and you find that because you are talking sense from research, uh, recall the case of Nidiplodia, we are talking on sense from research and you don't have to go and sit in the library to research there's a complement of a research team in the house you give them a topic they bring everything to your table and you sit and organize your notes mm. it's not like a, a university where you go and you do check this index and that no the our parliament is uh, staffed with uh, experienced researchers mm. 
You just give them a topic, and they'll bring the documents to your table, and you organize them and work. So, uh, you know, uh, but it requires leadership. Mm. If the chair is accepting mediocrity, mm. the house will be what we see today, mm. where everybody can stand, talk, uh, the chair can't even distinguish himself uh, that he, he's in the chair to guide. He's also debating. I, I, I find it extremely difficult. And uh, if a matter is subjudice, the House can't deal with it. But mm. we've seen the case of um, our honorable member for Chieng. She's in court, mm. but the House also wants to deal with her. I mean, what kind of guidance are they getting from the clerk? Because mm -hmm. anyone can be speaker, but there's a staff around the speakership. Mm. So sometimes you don't want to comment, but uh, we comment because really uh, for those of us who had uh, adequate guidance, adequate tuition, we will really miss uh, the Honorable Speaker Mwana Mwambo. May he so rest in peace. Um, just before we dive into our topic tonight, uh, the economy of Zambia, a gallant of uh, this nation has also passed on. And um, um, I've often said um, President Nawakwe, when an elderly person dies, you've literally lost a library. Yes. You've lost the library. I was amazed at the wealth of information that uh, Honorable Magande had uh, not just too long ago. Um, I called him and he said, Pastor, I'm not feeling well, but uh, by the grace of God, I'm getting okay. And I didn't know. This picture, you see, um, my wife and I, and our daughter, of course, in Pundu there, went, we went to visit him, and uh, we would spend a lot of times, a lot of times, at his house. And uh, that is our mother, may the Lord bless uh, the widow and the family. But my wife and I usually visited this man to just get the knowledge. Um, but what he would unfold about the economy, President Nawakwe, why wouldn't Zambia? use people like Magande to just go to the grave like that, like a stillborn child with that vast knowledge. Why wouldn't we use people like him? Um, uh, Dr. Magande was an international civil servant. I know that. He worked in various capacities around the world. Mm. The tragedy of our nation is that uh, our politics is such that uh, we have boxes mm. uh, that, uh, well, if they were MMD, mm. they are done. And therefore, we as PF, we've come. That's them. Now mm. it's us. And that's a tragedy. As I mentioned just now, that uh, the two leaders mm. were a library unto themselves. Absolutely. A library unto themselves a wealth of knowledge that will never be recovered because, um, uh, you know, even as UPND were coming in, in this government, most of them have never been in government. You would mm. have expected that uh, my elder brother, Dr. Magande, mm. would be called to advise. Mm. There are people in this nation who can advise and they will not even want a coin. It's not just uh, my late brother, Dr. Magande. You talk about uh, <laughs> a lot of justices mm. who are around. If you just want to consult on legal issues, you go to them. Mm. We have retired chief justices. 
mm. who have been uh, uh, acclaimed worldwide. But uh, you find uh, when they are making these uh, laws, they uh, just put up, put up. They, they don't even know what they are starting to do. <laughs> so it's a lack of consultation and this uh, thought around uh, politicians, as politicians to think that uh, we are a law unto ourselves, mm. that uh, we possess knowledge that others don't possess. And that's mm. why we make a mistake. A village setting is governed by the interaction of the elders in the village. Mm -hmm. If we can adopt that traditional setting in our governance, some of the mistakes that we make as politicians would be avoided. You know, President, what is so Because, uh, as, as you say here, there's this parliament. They look like they actually losing it because people have tuned off from parliament. Mm. But there is Dr. Mativini. Mm. He has saved for 12 years. I wonder if you contacted Dr. Mativini, if he would be able to say that he, he even he was consulted even for two minutes or a <laughs> second, <laughs> or even a millisecond. He, he's gone, that's it. We have to put something new in place. But these are issues which people can consult on the weekends or even ask him to go mm. back to the house mm. and uh, give knowledge to the members of parliament. Mm. It's, it's done world over. When uh, leaders retire, you ask them to come back and impart knowledge. This is where I'm saying... Um President Nawak with that, it is so painful it because is. Um, I spent uh, considerable time with the late uh, Honorable Magande. He, I would consult him on a number of issues. And the last time I remember when he was offloading how, where the economy is, that we are not bad, and he started. Uh, he started talking about how we are going, we can recover this economy. And the question I asked him was, uh, Dr. Magande, have you been to President HH? Because for me, the nation is at heart, President, as you have come to know. Uh, I knew he was stronger, President was stronger, is stronger, and nothing to do with tribe, but I the wealth of information he was offloading to me, I was so excited. And the amount of money he was ready to get from the international community to bring into Zambia. Uh, our mother, the widow, she's there. My heart bleeds to know that we have lost uh, Dr. Magande. And when I said, have you been to the government, have you asked uh, have you been to State House to just offload this? We want our economy. With this gentle laughter, I can still see him laughing. He said, Pastor, you can only advise when you are asked. Yes. If you are not asked, <laughs> you become irrelevant. <laughs> I have had people come to me and say, Oh, you need to talk to your brother. I said, Listen, the head of state mm. has. 8 million Zambians, 18. phone call, 18 million Zambians. Mm. If every Zambian had a, a phone, head of state would have their number. Mm. So don't come to me and say, go and talk to your brother. Talk to him about what? Mm. The president is, knows everything. Mm. So, uh, and, and, and that's where we lose it. Look at, uh, now we've lost uh, Dr. Magande. Uh, the contacts, the contacts, the contacts goodness. he had, the, the, you know, the, just the interaction. I mean, if you work in these international organizations, you make a network. Uh, governing is about networking. Governing is not about my best friends. Governing is about being on the street. Mm -hmm. and uh, asking that marketeer on the street to help you govern. 
governing is being at uh, Chief Unkula's palace and mm. asking, are we doing okay? Mm. How do we handle the agriculture season? Can we get some knowledge from you? I, I always say, if we could just be humble enough as politicians and go back to the basics and realize that uh, the chiefs, the village headmen, they live with the people and therefore they know best who in that village is capable of working hard to support the nation. Mm. But you see, Lusaka is everything. We live in Lusaka, we live in the capital city, and uh, basically uh, we tend to think as politicians in the city that uh, we are the most knowledgeable. Mm. Mm. You know, he, uh, the late talked about uh, how an international organization was pressurizing him <clears throat> to come and set up some development, which I know we will never have it, never, because it was through uh, the late uh, Dr. Magande that he was ready to bring in six billion dollars and the project that he had for Mazabuka and Southern Province which he had even identified uh, the place and also Zambia was going to benefit now that is gone and that money was not coming from IMF it was coming through Honorable Maganda's influence, like you said, the network. Now that is gone, I don't know who he passed on the information to say you can contact this. And those people trusted him as former Minister of Finance. And I remember jokingly telling him, I said, you know, Dr. Maganda, I think if I became president, I would do well to have people like you and the others just around me, you would be governing without the people knowing that it's uh, President Maganda and he laughed. And uh, it's really a loss. I can only say may he so rest in peace. I really miss this uh, gallant soldier of the soil. He had nothing to do with tribe. He had nothing to do with uh, you know, which party you belong to. I think Honorable Magande, Zambia was so much into him that people didn't understand him, some of them. Well, President, let's go back to our issue, the economy of Zambia. <laughs> and um, how is the economy doing? You are an economist. You are president of FDD, and I'm sure you are not just president of FDD. Who knows if Jehovah smiles over you, one day you'll be president of this nation with the vast uh, experience you had in the government. How is the economy doing? You see, the barometer of uh, any business, and let's take the country as a business, Mm -hmm. is measured by the profits. Mm -hmm. And uh, in a nation, the profits are seen on the table. Mm -hmm. The question is, are our people eating? The answer is basically no. Are our people getting the health care they need? The answer is basically no. I think recently we have been uh, told, and you can uh, uh, go to the university teaching hospital, that in fact facilities such as a cancer disease hospital they are basically a, a share of their former selves they mm. could even be closed they should be closed in fact because uh, the systems have completely broken down mm. but we get uh, the leader saying things are okay Mm. It's like a, a parent in a home when children don't eat for a weekend, you keep on saying, is that a daung? <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, it's a bit of a challenge yeah. for some of us mm. who come from a situation where we looked up to the state to organize strategic reserves. Mm. See, the FRA initially 
was an incarnation of the grain marketing board. And mm. over time, we agreed as a nation that it was going to store strategic reserves. Mm -hmm. The strategic reserves are usually used by the government to cushion the impact of fluctuating prices. Mm. It's not just about food. We need the strategic reserves for medicines. We need strategic reserves for bullets. We need strategic reserves for ma many things, mm. fuel. So you cannot tell motorists that, no, you are OK. You drive next week. And mm. equally, you cannot tell a hungry child that you're okay, you eat next week. Mm. I think if uh, anyone would judge Haga in the HRM, mm. it is his failure to marshal the energies in the country mm. to engage in food production. Mm. I tend to think that. Um, the glory of being recognized internationally mm. far supersedes mm. the need to feed the nation. Mm. Because when they came in, there were over 1.5 million tons of, uh, of maize. Mm -hmm. And uh, in a week, we consume roughly about 200,000 metric tons. Mm. 200,000 times 12 is 2.4 million tons. As we speak today, mm -hmm. FRA has around about uh, 350,000 metric tons mm. in reserves. And this is October, so there's no more maize to buy. Mm. That's, we have one week's worth of strategic reserves. Mm. Now, a naive agriculturist will say, I found food in the storage load it and send it to the Congo. Mm. I don't know if uh, they have appointments with God mm. to, so that they, they were told that next year is going to rain, next year going... It's, it's an act of naivety. Mm. Uh, because maize reserves, if in fact you went to South America or the Americas, Maize is stored for close to 10 years in silos. Oh, really? Yes. And uh, you take in first in, first out. So as every year you have to keep a certain minimum storage reserve. But here we get someone given the authority to govern us and empties our silos mm. and doesn't replenish them. Mm -hmm. For me, that's a grave failure. That's a glaring failure. And this one failure, mm -hmm. this one failure is what has caused misery in homes. Mm -hmm. Because um, uh, what happens now is that our country is open to all and sundry. In fact, during the crop marketing season, mm -hmm. you get foreigners from Rwanda, from Congo, from Malawi, they populate our villages and are buying grain. You can't do that in Tanzania. Mm. You can't even do it in DRC. Mm. You can't go to Zimbabwe as a Zambian and start buying grain in Zimbabwe. Mm. What the hell are we doing here to allow foreign buyers to populate our villages? Mm. By the way, next week is a, a caterpillar marketing season in Mpika and Chinsari. Mm. I challenge this government to go there. There will be Congolese in the villages buying caterpillars. Mm. Maybe that's a free market. But can you go and get Vinkubara in DR Congo? Mm -mm. You can't. You can't. So, I mean, it's a failure of the governance system. Mm. And uh, we talk about failures. I want to say this, that we've talked about failures enough. Anyone who has ears, let them hear. Mm. And you know that we are calling them dismal failures. But for me, I want to suggest the following. Mm. That uh, to be able to reverse this catastrophe, Hakainde Ichirema needs to get down to the basics. Mm. Get the chiefs, get the village headmen to be involved in the 
agriculture season 2023-2024 if we are going to avert extreme hunger. And I say this because uh, what they have done is that uh, they've said, oh, we are going to support one million farmers with uh, FISIP packets. But what is it? You give someone a meda. Mm. Can he himself feed his family with a meda? No, he can't. A meda of fertilizer. It's not possible. I mean, we had gotten to a position where uh, our late president, uh, Arabi, mm. was giving a hectare worth of inputs to a family. Throughout the, Zambia? For those who were on the packet mm. throughout the country. Mm. PF picked on that. That's why UPND found strategic reserves. You can call them names, you can call them what you want, but at least they fed us. Mm. At least we are not scrounging and picking up grain at grain uh, marketing sites. Mm. At least the minimum was not 300. Look, I have workers on the farm. Mm. So when you tell me that uh, ZNS is selling minimum at 230, mm. and you are just supposed to pick up one bag, how the hell am I going to get my workers to come and queue up in town mm -hmm. to buy one bag and start off to go back to the farm? The whole arrangement is without a face of humanity. But isn't because the National it, Service delivering in shop rights and all the shops in Zambia? Is, is, uh, honestly, are you telling me that there's a shop right in Nam Namshakende and Chadiza and mm -hmm. Nakonde? Mm. There's no shop right in Nakonde. There's no shop right in Mugubudu. Mm. I mean, it's, there, there are 18 shop right outlets in the whole country. 18. Mm. 42, and now uh, Pick and Pay has closed the, most, some of their shops. There were 42 um, <laughs> uh, Pick and Pay outlets. There, 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 are, no, there are no shop right uh, facilities in, in Mukonchi. Mm. In Chief Nkana's area, there are no shop rights. So you are telling me that Chief Nkana must load all the people from Chief Nkana and go to, to Kitu or somewhere there. I mean, the whole arrangement is absurd and it lacks focus. And it's simple. Uh, Zambia National Service, mm. with their three milling plants, can they manage the whole country? There are, three, manage, there are three milling plants? Well, maybe there are more. I'm not in government, but uh, I can make a statement which they are free to correct. Mm. So, and uh, you recall that uh, uh, the ZNS-1, the commander, Mr. Solochi, mm. he was on air saying that they are importing uh, milling from South Africa for onward rebugging and transmission to Congo. Mm -hmm. They were importing GMOs. So, uh, people are saying when they eat uh, ZNS Minimil, Fide Baba. So, mm. you don't know whether they are milling our maize, because where are they getting the maize? There's no maize mm. to give to ZNS. Mm. So, now, instead of ZNS doing the work which we gave them by the act, they are now busy trading in, uh, in Minimil, which is very, very unfortunate. It's a mark of failure on this government. Mm. And uh, you see, when you talk about uh, the defense and security, yes, they're supposed to keep strategic reserves, but they're not supposed to go and be the principal players in the market. Mm. And so what, what I'm suggesting is this, that um, uh, last year I did say, you are saying you have given money to CDF. Mm. Take this money, buy fertilizer, and sit in each constituency. Get the chief, get the headman, get the councillors. Sit in there and say, who are the able-bodied young women and men? We want you to do two hectares each. One for beans, of course, and one for mm. maize. And uh, if they do it properly, they will get 10 to 13 tons. If we can guide them, give them the extension service, a hectare of maize in 2023 is supposed to give us 10 to 13 tons. There are hybrids which yield that much. Mm. And uh, 
If you do that, a family of 10 cannot consume 13 tons in one calendar year. We have surplus. The only time that this country had a surplus, surplus grain is when the people we know on the ground were properly facilitated and supported to grow food for us. Mm. Whether it's groundnuts, cotton, soya beans. You can't tell your people grow soya beans and then the next day you fold your hands and say, no, sorry, we're not buying. Mm. I, I, I just don't understand what UPND stands for. Mm. I don't understand. They seem to be pandering to the West. And when you go to make these agreements and you say that you are going to cut support to your people and you turn around, like the president turned around and said he has appointed a permanent secretary for energy whom he has instructed to see how to reduce the price of fuel. But he knows that he, his minister of finance with his authority went to Washington and signed for fluctuating fuel prices. So how do you just shing us butter? You know, what to do? He can mm. turn us like a football field and say, no, I've, I've given you a, minister, a permanent secretary and my instructions to this permanent secretary is that he must give us a formula of how to reduce the, how to stabilize the fuel prices. All these are indication that someone is not consulting the professionals. Someone doesn't know what he's doing. Mm. Someone doesn't understand the economics. And maybe someone is living in a castle which is too high for us. So are you saying the PS, Madam Nawako, can't reduce the prices, can't stabilize the prices? He would breach the agreement between the IMF and the Republic of Zambia, which says that they have to recover the full cost of the, of the fuel. It's, it's in the IMF agreements. It's in the, the IMF agreements? Yes, it's one of the conditions. I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> I, I just, sometimes I wonder, sometimes I want to keep quiet and watch. Uh, they are fond of propaganda. So mm. even when a, a, a person called the president engages in false propaganda, mm. you just wonder where this country is headed to. Mm. It's, it's unfortunate. But uh, if we do nothing this year, mm. next year, hunger will be worse. And I can see that hunger is going to be worse because they have said that, uh, that uh, they will support some farmers and some other farmers must get loans. This is <laughs> October. Mm. The rain is here. When are people going to write those loan proposals to get loans to plant for the 2023-24 mm. calendar season? The only solution is what I'm suggesting, that let's stop these uh, consumer development projects if in fact there's money, which I don't believe there is. And it, they, no, there is. Take, it was even increased to 30, theoretically. 30 million. Th Say theoretically. In fact, he had said that by 2023-2024, he was going to double. So I was expecting 56 million. Mm. Now, it's just on paper. But mm. that could in mm. Because why would you not buy medicine to support a child in the village who needs mm. medicine? Why would, not, why would you not invest in the diagnostic equipment in the hospitals mm. and the warehouse money at the local council and say, no, we are going to buy vehicles for the MPs. We are going to do this. But what are they doing? What are they doing? I would, I'm suggesting that whatever money is available in the treasury, mm. let us focus that money. Let us take that money, vary it, and spend it on maize production. Mm not only maize, grain production, because we can recover that money next year. We are not investing in coffee plantations. We are mm. not investing in macadamia plantation or banana plantations. I am saying the crop, crops that we can invest in, groundnuts, soya beans, beans, maize, millet, they are a lead time of six months. If we 
harvest, we can sell and then support our uh, consequences mm. with consequences development fund. But you can't start from a position of weakness and expect to just be a successful in name. Decentralization in itself does not just mean give money to the consequence. Decentralization means we also need to decentralize our brains. Mm. Uh, as it is now, the professionals in the districts are just sitting. They can't even afford the newspaper. They just see the MPs with the uh, committees and the council doing things which uh, they themselves as uh, uh, central government functionaries. And I'm talking about uh, the district engineer, the district medical officer. They're just sitting. They don't have money because the central government is not passing any money to the mainstream departments. Mm. If we have decentralized, we need the staff in the districts to be absorbed in the local authorities so that we have manpower capacity, human resource capacity at local level to support the villages. I want to be very graphic. In my village, the most educated person is probably my young brother mm. at that level. He went up to grade nine. Mm. At the district level, we have a district agriculture officer with a master's degree. Who would you rather help plan for the people's development in my village? The chairman of the local committee, my brother, or the district agriculture officer? With a district, they will tell you they want a boho. They don't know how deep that boho should be mm. sunk. They don't understand that that boho has to be cast up to the bottom. Mm. I was Minister of Water. And uh, whenever we did bohos in the villages, we also had to train them on how to dismantle the, the pumps, or grease them, and put them back. Wherever we failed to do that, after one month, you find that the pump has broken down. And they, there's no one to help them. But the only people who can help them do that are the government functionaries in the districts. And mm. this government thinks that professionals are nothing. Mm. You would rather work with my cousin in my village who doesn't know any engineering. You say, this village, form a committee, build a school, build a bridge. It, it's, it, it eludes my thinking, and I, I, maybe I'm too dull. <laughs> 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 my colleagues are too that. clever. So, <laughs> <laughs> because when I think through it, and I say, my God, when I go back to my village, in the whole neighborhood, the highest education at that level is maybe a grade 9 or grade 12. But just uh, two kilometers from my village, there's a district water engineer, district agriculture officer, district medical officer, uh, officer in charge of the police. They are all educated by taxpayers. And the professional but people. They are professionals, but we are making them redundant. They have to watch the Consumers Development Fund being shared by mm. people who have no interest mm. of moving the country forward. I think it's a wrong approach. Mm. He can say anything, and I've seen people from the West are saying, no, social, whatever, whatever. This is going to be a damn failure. It will be, in fact, written on Haga Inde's epitaph that here lies a man who didn't know where to start and end. <laughs> You, the good thing about you, uh, President Nawak, which time I interview you, you, ha you have this grace to also advise what the government should do. You are not just criticizing, but you are offering solutions, like you said, that the president should go to all the chiefs, all village headmen, and like you said, the Bible is very clear. It says. Um, Plans are for man, but God takes the steps. I like that verse. That said, it is also predicted, the President Nawakwe, that we may face our Nino in this coming year, that the rains won't be as we expect globally. Uh, if God does not favor Zambia with the rain, 
uh, to bring up the yield that we anticipate. What do you think will happen in 2023, 2024, 2025 season? There are two factors. That when God makes no appointment with anyone, whether it's death, whether it's the air mm. uh, we breathe. So that's why the biblical Joseph is what we need in Africa. Mm. Who will know that from uh, the times that God sets, there's a time of plenty and a time of nothing. Mm. And that's why in the Bible, they talk about the greenery. Mm. If Joseph, working in the house of Pharaoh, did not understand God's hand, mm. there is absolutely no way that they would have received the grace to even reunite with his brothers. Absolutely. So, if you don't get a, 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 a leaf from that, Mm. You behave like Haga in the You find food in the <laughs> granary, you, you give it to your friends because you want them to be your friends. Any leader must know that mm. there are times of plenty and times and lean times. Mm. So uh, it was not advisable mm. to offload what they found just because they think that PF was not servicing DR Congo. Mm. And, uh, you know, a few years ago, we were sending grain to Zimbabwe. Mm. I can tell you, the only savior we have at the moment in terms of our oncoming hunger mm. is Zimbabwe. Now, ask me, we are the friends of the West. Mm. We are getting all the favors. How come Zimbabwe is going to overtake us in being a, a grain basket? Mm. What is it that they are doing? that we are not doing. President Munangagwa has made agriculture his priority number one. Mm. Anyone, whether you are a teacher, a police officer, in this country, if a, 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 an agricultural assistant uh, <laughs> plants two hectares, mm -hmm. and we found him with the money, proceeds of crime. Proceeds of crime. Mm. So, if you can't get an assistant agriculture officer to plant five hectares, who else is best suited? Mm. Normally, when they go for these outings, they will say, let's go to some commercial farmer for a, a, a few days. We need to make our agricultural assistants grow crop or whatever and use them as our model for what we want. Mm. And uh, President Munangagwa, the steps he has taken to say any able-bodied Zimbabwean must be facilitated to provide food first for themselves, mm. the surplus to give to, to the government. I think mm. that's a correct step. Secondly, any nation, the tragedy we have in our country is that we have these shades. Mm -hmm. In the shades, we can store a crop for maybe two to three years. We need to say that, for example, they have these consumer development funds. Mm. Me, I'm a fanatic on agriculture. I would have said, you MPs, each consumer put a 10,000 ton silo. Mm. And the 150, that's it. Actually, you can store food in this country without spending a coin to collect it. Because if you have a silo in a, a Muchinga consumer, you just tell each household and say, store your strategic reserves in this side. Mm. When hunger comes, you come and withdraw it. It becomes as a bank. Mm. When there is too much plenty, you tell food reserve agents, come and sell for us. And people will receive money. There are no banks in the rural areas. We can make uh, these silos as banks. Mm. Because when you have collected food, that's your cash, that's your money. Mm. And uh, people can even uh, uh, say that they deposited their grain at such and such a place, mm -hmm. and uh, therefore they can access cash somewhere. So uh, when a Nino falls on us, mm. God forbid, we are already in a situation where people are 
literally starving in the villages. Mm. And uh, the one who is supposed to feed them is saying, no, Filife winu mkwai, Filife winu mkwai. Zintu zirika botu. But you can't tell someone who is on oxygen mm. and say, you are okay, you are recovering, but you are not giving them panado. It's not correct. Mm. People, you, when you say 230 from ZNS, some people I was talking to yesterday say they don't even know how the bag of ZNS looks like. Mm. I mean, how many bags are they producing per day? For the whole country. Mini meal is 270 kwacha. If you go to the millers in Lusaka. So it's just a, a marketing ploy. And our friends in UPND, they're very good and savvy on the Facebook. Mm. So it's a Facebook number. In the stomach, there's nothing. People mm. are starving. Mm. And it's, it's really a tragedy, but it's not just about food. So for me, what I would like to tell them is get up, start to work. Mm. We have uh, literally one month. In some places, it's even raining. We are late. In the northern province, the people are supposed to plant by uh, beginning of uh, the second week of October because that's 150 days maturity, those big cobs in northern province. Mm. Have you delivered the fertilizer? Have you delivered the seed? The answer is a stack. No, we have told our brother, move Mutolo, aka fupo chemen utemenwe, eka kusho mchene. Mutolo has really, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it's a love life they have. And uh, maybe that's is a minister, minister of agriculture, of agriculture or mm. minister of hunger. He, when you are minister <laughs> of agriculture, you should produce food. But this one is minister of famine. And mm. uh, when he talks, unfortunately, the leader listens to him. When we advise, they say, no, they even want to arrest us for felonies which they themselves have created. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, God loves me because uh, by now I wouldn't be sitting here. Mm. I, I, I was really shocked that uh, a president who is supposed to protect my rights mm. can actually commit a felony and pass it on to a, a, a citizen. I, I, it, it has been a shock of my life that, uh, you know, I didn't expect it. Mm. So this person... I don't know what is made of. So when we talk, he thinks that uh, we are just uh, talking. We love our country. Mm. This is the eve of independence. We love the freedom. Mm. Even in poverty, mm. which they want us to live in, this is the best place on earth. Mm. You know why? I can walk out of here. There are no bullets fighting, running around. The, our people who are looking after our lives, they are, they are Christians. I, I look at uh, the, the, the defense and security choir. I say God loves our country. Mm. So it is us politicians who are going to mess the destiny of our nation. Napsa is selling properties and oh. land and all this. Uh, the advert is there in the public domain. Uh, what is your view? Are Actually, we in a second phase of privatization? Actually, to be very honest, first, mm. if I were to advise, and if my advice could be heeded, mm. let Hakainde with it instruct NAPSA to stop this. NAPSA on its own as a management, mm. they would never, never go this far. Mm. I remember when uh, I was Minister of Finance mm. and when we started the Presidential Housing Initiative. The, sometimes presidents get over zealous, you know that. Mm. Uh, they wanted to get the assets of building society and put them in the Presidential Housing in Initiative. And the manager then says, no, this is people's funds. Mm. They harass the young man and he says, no, I can't do it, not under my watch. But you see, when you have nepotism in appointment, everybody is yes, buana, yes, buana. No one can advise you correctly. NAPSA's funds belong to the savers. 
the little people in the villages who are working on farms, they, the workers, the domestic workers, mm. the, those who are not in the management scales, they are the owners of NAPSA. Mm. And for Haka India and his government to treat NAPSA as if it's their personal purse, mm. I think it's a criminal offense. And they will pay dearly. You see, he's creating an amnesty tomorrow to release um, prisoners. Mm. Thank God he's decongesting the prisons for UPND members to go in <laughs> when they leave office. Because look at mm. this, what they've done. The Chinese were here. He hounded them out. Then he goes back to them and say, come and build the Ndola Lusaka Road. Mm -hmm. Now, we are used to our friends from the People's Republic of China building Tazara with their own money, building uh, Levi Mwanawasa with their own money. Now, this economist mm. thinks that it's economic enough to take NAPSA money, people's savings, Hire a contractor from China to do the road and mm. pay them. Now, if he really wanted to do that, he would ask NAPSA to hire a contractor and build a road. And the road would be owned by NAPSA. Mm. Now, he's asking NAPSA to lend the Chinese money and tell the Chinese with his uh, friends, you know, the people in the consortium, some of them are his bosom friends, the people who funded UPND. Mm. They are the ones managing the consortium of the Lusaka Ndora Road. Mm. And they will be collecting targets. Right now they are collecting. Now, the most lucrative stretch of targets is Lusaka to, to the border. And Hakainde, in his naivety, has taken this pot of money and handed over to his friends. Mm. The Chinese will be paid. The people who remain collecting the tolls are his friends. Now, NAPSA is a pension fund equivalent. It is actually a pension fund. Mm. If you are an economist, you know that there is a subject called the actuary studies. Actuaries, actuaries to tell you that if you put two kwacha today and you want to withdraw it in 10 years, it will be available and this is the amount. Mm. So now, in his quest for popularity, he says they will withdraw 50%. Mm. Then he tells NAPSA, you fund the road construction. So basically, NAPSA is literally bankrupt. They cannot meet day-to-day -day obligations of people retiring or leaving jobs or what, dying and all that. So that's why now NAPSA has to sell the buildings. Now, Pastor Chiru, mm. do you have money to buy a building on Chachacha Road today? Absolutely not. So the only rich people in this country are the richest. And one of those richest is the president. Mm. So what makes me not think that he's doing it for himself? Mm. Because this is a person who said, how did you get your money? Yeah, na ireku school. School is in an equalizing. No, Mam Lelan that in a decent FIA privatization, Mualeshpula, a pata to Leshpula, no Shpula, to Lelo Leshana means why, yeah. But if I of Quacana, if you could work, Fia Napsa, because who is going to buy your farm at $20 million? Mm. Only the richest. Or oh, these guys are so smart. They are friends and partners they are in the business of structuring deals worldwide. You will see uh, Chris and partners from Bahamas. You and I will think it's Chris and partners. Mm. It's a share of the richest people in Zambia. And one of those richest is the president. If he is not buying it, can he put a stop to this? Because these are people's funds. When KK built these things, he didn't build them for us to just come and uh, sample them. You know, it's not correct that one person through privatization owns the entire Kabulonga. It's not correct. It's not mm. correct. Uh, you can say what you want. You can do what you want. You can't tell me that uh, your friends can say like Dangote, me, I started packing water to mm. sell to school children. And they ask you and say, Musa, 
Kodi you and drama zako na mbabu anja ati ni school. If I sina end school, me I went to Imperial College. Mm -hmm. I'm not the richest woman in Zambia. Maybe I'm down, didn't nourish pula. So, I mean, look, it's not about uh, luck or where you are. Mm. But don't exploit the people. We are, we in Zambia, yes, we have one or two millionaires who are not like our friends in Tanzania. Because in Tanzania, the banks enable everybody. Here, if you are in the opposition, you can't get a contract. You can't get a bank loan. You know, it's, it's a tragedy to be in this space because mm. it doesn't matter how bright you are. You can be running a TV station. As long as you host Idris Nawakwe, you become an enemy of the state. Mm. It, I, we are not brought up to be civilized Democrats. Mm. We are inferior Democrats mm. because we don't understand democracy. Mm. as a nation and unfortunately all that we see is bitterness around and uh, truly uh, I think on this issue where the the government is looting people's resources mm. we have to be very firm for me I have no apology I think the disposal of assets of NAPSA is nothing but looting by this government mm. and the key looter is the president himself because these are people's savings. Mm. When, when you involve yourself in business and politics and governance, there's no, the dividing line is very thin, mm. very, very thin. And uh, uh, you see, uh, we, we have all been there. I know when you open the lines, they say, you were there. You were, yes, we were there, but we have examples of what we saved. I was Minister of Finance for 11 months. Mm. 11 months, but uh, when you go to the uh, public pension fund house, that mm. was Memako house. It was supposed to be sold by Anglo-American. I said, no, let's swap. Mm. I'll give you $100 as long as you take the planes and sell the planes. You remember my air services? Mm. I said, take the planes, give me Memako's house. That's how I moved the pe pension fund from <laughs> Nyumbayanga to Memako house. Mm. I saved the state insurance. I literally went to cabinet and said, we can't sell Zambia state insurance. Every country has a pension fund. Mm. If we have NAPSA and we have Ziski, mm. we have cash because those are collectibles mm. from our people. And what I need to say to the Minister of um, uh, <laughs> NAPSA, mm. no, uh, Labour. Labour. Yes. Madam, we've all been in that chair. Please, my sister, save NAPSA. Mm. I am the one who restructured NAPSA. Mm -hmm. Honorable Machungwa started, but I'm the one who organized the funds because it was restoring because there was no money to pay the workers. Mm. When I went there, I organized the money from World Bank. And NAPSA employees were the best paid. They are the ones who bought these uh, 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 minibuses. But uh, you know, I want to say, and I've said this before, the law we put in place mm. is not friendly to growing NAPSA. Mm. For example, there was the penalty of 20%. Mm. That uh, if you don't pay your NAPSA contribution as an employer, you are fined 20% and it's compounded. So that... You uh, left that law? Of or? course. And I've repeatedly said it's a bad law. It's a bad law. Mm. But you see, when I say it's a bad law, they don't want to listen. We're the ones who put it in place. And we're telling them, it's a bad law, remove it. Why, only... why did you put it if you... You know, at the time, law? we were starting a, a new system called NAPSA mm. from NPF. Mm. And we never envisaged that employers will comply. Mm. If you are starting a new facility, you, we thought, you know, I'm sitting as minister and saying, oh, the employers have to comply. Mm. So what will make them comply? If I put a penalty, then they will comply, they will run to pay and avoid the penalty. But it doesn't work like that. It's cash flows. Mm. So that itself is a hindrance because 
if someone has a worker whom they haven't registered for three months, mm. and you go there to NAPS and say, uh, I've come to register my work. They say, how long have you been working? Three months. Pay notice. Mm. So I advise the minister that remove that law, create an amnesty and say, every worker who is not registered, please come over and either register yourself or get your employer to register you. You will see how NAPSA will grow. Mm. Right now, employers are in fear. If I go there and say, mm. my worker was not registered, they penalize you, they jail you, they mm. sell your assets. So that law, call it Nawaki law or Machungwa law or anything, is not enabling the growth of NAPSA. Let us be creative and do something. Equally, at Minister of Lands, I think at Minister of Lands there's also a 20%, because each minister started to do that to be able to compel uh, compliance. Mm. I think that uh, ZRA has done a, a good thing and they did rake in a lot of money. Get that, then the government will be getting money from uh, different sources. They call it non-tax revenue. Now, there's no nation which has developed without pension funds. South Africa is built on mutual funds. Mm. If you go to that Santon seat, it's mutual funds. For us, we need mutual funds. They can build roads. I'm not saying they shouldn't be used to build roads, but if NAPSA had, was the one collecting money from the toll gates, I would mm. have absolutely no issue. Mm. But in the naivety of this government, they take a private person from Italy or somewhere in the Bahamas or wherever and say, there's a consortium and the consortium will be collecting rates. I think that's totally naive. Is that collecting on behalf of the government or theirs? <laughs> Themselves. So but why would you? Why would you? If, if you want to collect money from targets mm. and you think uh, roads fund, they were collecting. They were very efficient. But if they are not efficient, put ZRA there. Mm. And that's the point I'm making. If NAPSA has invested, mm. why aren't they collecting? Mm. Why do they need a consortium to collect and pay them for borrowing from there? Why would you get a Chinese firm to borrow from my pension fund, honestly? Mm. Honestly. Why? Mm. Anyway. Assuming uh, the plans go ahead for NAPSA to sell property, to sell land, Five, ten years from now, after they've sold everything, what will be the source of their revenue? Uh, contributions, but uh, you see, they've, they've already paid out 50% to those who have queued up to collect 50%. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Minister of Labor mm. has never published an actual study on NAPSA mm. to show that in 10 years' time or 5 years' time, NAPSA will be able to meet its obligations. They are doing it chipante pante. No guidance, nothing. There are no experts who have sat. The only actuaries we have in the region are South Africans. We have not heard that the actuaries are at NAPSA doing a study on the viability of the pension fund. It hasn't mm. been done. So this withdrawal, partial withdrawal, lending money to to the Chinese road contractors, uh, the consortium or whatever, is being done in the absence of clear information. So when you ask that question, my pastor, my fear is that we have a bankrupt pension fund. You, you, you see Dukos. such a thing happening? Yes, 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 yes. And they'll be long gone. They'll mm. be long gone. They are creating a system which they will be now pointing to the other government and say they are not able to pay pension funds, they are broke. This, w this action alone shows that uh, UPND has no agenda for the nation. They have an agenda for enriching themselves as players at this point in time. Mm. Um, I'm going to call upon the people of Zambia. Uh, to open the lines, uh, my director, so that people can contribute 
Just in case we've missed one or two things or President Nawakwe is not explaining things according to your satisfaction, you are free to call and let us know where we stand. This is <coughs> national matters. Anything to do with the nation, the nation, it should not be politicized. It should not be because you are uh, FDD, you are PF. Let's debate the nation uh, matters. <coughs> You've heard, my dear cabinet TV viewers, uh, President uh, uh, Nawakwe admitting that the law that they had put in place was a wrong one. And she's appealing that if that can be removed, then the people of Zambia will be empowered and will move forward. Uh, the mistakes that may be committed today, they will be corrected 20, 30 years from now. And we think our children never went to school, and yet it's us who are leaving those things. Um, it's because you have called, I'll pick up this, but I also want to let you know where CAMNET is. Yes, sir, who, or oh, madam, who is calling? Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Pastor Chirula. How are you? Permanently blessed. And uh, what's your name and where are you calling us from? This is Simon Ziva. Si Simon Ziva. Yes, sir from within Lusaka. Please go ahead and contribute to the debate. Thank you. Uh, Madam Nawaki, how are you? I'm fine, Mr. Ziba. How are you? Okay. Mr. Uh, ma 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 okay. you, you sound very annoyed. Uh, you're not painting a good picture. You, the pastor asked you nicely that you created this NAFTA. I didn't hear your answer well, which is why did you put that technology which you are condemning now? And you are saying the current government is doing this mess and two years or so years from now they will be pointing that people have messed up things. We will be home to say you are part of the mess that you are talking about. That's number one. I uh, didn't hear your answer to what the pastor asked and to pastor for that question. It was a question from the free uh, Number two, it's good you are back. Uh, okay, you were known where to be in two months ago. You talked of the hacking was towards the election. Through you, my pastor, I want to hear clearly from our mother where are the heart symbols and what really happened here. You told that uh, President Ege is loved and all sorts of things. You talked of those issues of farms in Salomo. What is the real issue? Number three. After Antonio Maza left you, who are we expecting? What was an FDD? And what are the plans FDD has? You are just pointing fingers at UPAD, the government, the HHD, saying something yourself that you need. Okay, we, we seem to have lost Mr. Simon Ziva. Before you answer, I think for me, Hatembo is not a national issue. This is national matters. No, I, uh, it, I don't it, want it, you to it, comment, it, even to bring about that. Those are in the courts of law. No, there, there's nothing in the courts of law. Okay, if it's not there, I wouldn't like to discuss Hatembo at this, because this is going to international matters. I don't want to confuse my, uh, my, my audience. Secondly, about Antonio. It's not a subject of discussion here. I don't want to discuss people and why, where you are. I think this to me do not tie in. So anything personal, let's discuss about Mirimio. Let's discuss about national issues. Uh, this, this, sorry Mr. Ziva, 
I'm not uh, uh, defending my guest, but as a moderator and as pastor, Hatembo is not an issue for me, and Antonio, whatever. About your being annoyed, I, I don't know, because your advice that you've given, I've said the good thing is, you say this is wrong, and you give the advice to say what the president should do is one, two, three, you are offering a solution. I think, let me guide the nation in that forum. When we miss it, uh, let's offer a solution to our president. Uh, when you offer a solution, it's not that you're annoyed, it's not that you're against somebody. And these are some of the problems Africa is, is facing, because if you don't, you go against what is in place you sound like you are an opposition. So for me, as moderator, these issues raised the hard tables, Antonio, don't even comment on them because I'm the chairperson. I don't want to confuse somebody who's watching Camnet TV for the first time and they hear with Antonio, who is he? <laughs> uh, let's go to the issue um, that um, you talked about, that we should and I agree that uh, if we don't play our cards well, look at this, what Mr. Zimba has failed to see. The PF contracted uh, this uh, Eurobond. It was not MMD. No. They signed for Eurobond. PF, who are having problems today, it's the UPND. So if PF had played their, their cards well, that Eurobond should not have been a burden to, to UPND. They would have come on a clean slate and start administering. These are the problem we are avoiding, that let not UPND leave something which the next generation will have to grapple with. I think this is what we are talking about. Uh, precisely. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, if Mr. Ziba understands the, the explanations. The question was about NAPSA offloading assets. Mm. And I'm saying that uh, that's wrong. And he says I'm annoyed. Any Zambian who is a contributor, mm. I'm not a contributor, I'm over age, who is a contributor to NAPSA, who has not been consulted, should be annoyed mm. that uh, this government is taking money which they have saved mm. and giving to private persons. Mm -hmm. That's the issue. Mm. And uh, annoyed to the extent that uh, we have had pension funds in this country which failed to pay the contributors. Mukuba mm. pension fund. Mm. When the mines were closed, there was no money because the, uh, the UNIP government then used to fall back on the pension funds to finance government activities. Mm. The pensioners or from the mines, some of them were not paid. Mm. Some pensioners right now who have been saving, and this is KCM uh, pensioners, who sent money to Satunia Regina Pension Fund, mm -hmm. which fund was then sent to Benefit Consulting, which was alleged to have been externalized. In fact, mm. the, 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 the Pensions and Insurance Authority even penalized the uh, uh, Satunia Regina Pension Fund because they had externalized the $42 million mm -hmm. without board approval. And that's the KCM money. And when the KCM pensioners went to collect their pension, they were being paid 50%. And being told that the half of their 50% has been invested in Sanlam. You cannot take my money without my authority and invest it willy-nilly the way you want. Mm. And uh, who, is, who is Aflife? That's a company which was said to be formally owned by the president. So we don't want to go into these details. We want to just say, limit at NAPS and say, stop it. Mm. 
So, because we have had pensioners in this republic who cannot access their pensions because their money was abused. Mm. Some money was externalized to South Africa, some money to Europe, and the, the public records are there by the uh, board members and uh, trustees of, of these facilities. Mm. In fact, they were even penalized. They were mm. surcharged for externalizing money without the authority of the, the, the trustees. Mm. So here, NAPSA doesn't have trustees. Trustee number one is the president. Trustee mm. number two is the minister. And I'm saying stop it. Mm. Uh, there are people I'm directing to stop because maybe they have not lived through situations where pensioners are not paid. Mm. But uh, what is happening at uh, NAPSA is going to be a disaster in the next five to ten years. Mm. Because, and I have said, they are doing it without an actual study. Mm. When you are dealing with pension funds, you get the experts who, you say, I have put two kwacha. How much will I need to pay out in ten years? They will tell you, you need so much deposits to be able to reach to that. Mm. Now, if you draw them halfway, and then you take the back of the money and uh, send it. Exactly what happened to Mukuba Pension Fund is going to happen to NAPSA. Mm. So uh, you can't tell me that uh, I'm annoyed. And uh, that's a tragedy of uh, our friends in UPND. Mm. They buy telephone sets and they give to these people, they give them questions, ask this, ask that. Mm. I did say and I acknowledge that uh, our international viewers uh, don't want to know what is happening. Mm. But I could be in jail right now mm. for a felony committed by uh, the leader of UPND mm. while in opposition. I could be in jail. I mm. was being accused of abducting people whom they themselves had hidden. Mm. And one of them has come out and said they were with me. And that person had sued me for defamation. Mm. So really, I had it said on this platform. Don't tout me. One day this chipute is to blow in your faces. And it did. They've mm. gone quiet. So here is just trying to cleanse themselves. So I, I, I yield to your uh, uh, guidance. Uh, no, thank uh, you. Pastor, but, thank uh, you for that. Uh, I want also to say that this thing is very embarrassing to the president. Mm. This story they keep on raising. Can they do my young brother a favor and mm. stop it? Because it's right in his doorstep. Mm. Yes. No, that one because uh, of the public domain and facts that have come up, and I don't want to confuse Ye my yes, certainly. Yeah, uh, my viewers, uh, their issues. Let's deal with the national issues. Yes. Like, you know, the every government leaves something. You as a MMD, you left us in problems because. Yes. But we had cleared the loans. Yeah, you had cleared the loans. I'm talking about governments. Yes. Look at this. Um, There's always this something to inherit, to inherit which you yeah. may not be acceptable to the next group. Correct. And that's why people change governments. Yeah. If they accepted what the other groups are doing, mm -hmm. there would be no need to change governments. Yeah, because the MMD sold the planes. Yes. They sold all the assets of Zambia, which was unnecessary. Of course. And the ones paying now, it's the Zambian people. Yes. We are hiring uh, planes which look like Chongololo from Ethiopia, <laughs> and we say Zambia Airways. So for me, we should avoid this, and we should talk about these things. PF, MMD left something for PF. PF left something for UPND, UPND will leave something. We should avoid this. This is what National Matters is all about. Hello, good evening. Uh, good evening. Good evening, sir. Speak a little bit louder. What's your name and where are you calling us from? My name is uh, Paul Jekwa, calling from the name of Kakabana. Mr. Paul Jekwa from Kabanana. Please go ahead and speak to the nation. The discussion is interesting. Um, for the former finance minister, Madam Nawako, mm -hmm. what is it that we are doing wrong that our governance system seems not to be sorted 
probably not issues for their master. Uh, you, you have a brilliant idea, but basically, it's like, in fact, I would say the opposition who have a lot of good ideas. So, are you failing to put forward your good ideas to the current government or what? Then, uh, for, for my pastor, yeah. we've read a lot about uh, the dollar, Mosaka Jewel, Courage Jewel. Maybe you could help us by bringing someone to come and clarify the issue of NAFSA being involved. Uh, thank you so much, Rapo uh, Njekwa. As a matter of fact, um, tonight I should have been with the Minister of Labor, Madam Madam Tamba Tamba, but because of national engagements and what, I hope to be with her next week on Monday. And graciously enough, um, President Nawako was there. Uh, that I'll ask about the road. What are the facts surrounding this road? And uh, is it true that uh, NAPSA will be paying for the road which can be uh, paid for by PPP, I, I don't know. But uh, she asked you, he asked you a question. The, uh, the, the, the information that we know is that NAPSA is funding the road, and I think a compensation fund. Uh, the point to note is that uh, this government, when they came in, they found the money had been secured. Mm. Uh, the government cancelled close to three billion dollars worth of approved projects mm. from the People's Republic of China and said that the money was very expensive. Mm. Uh, but uh, this option is not a cheap option. Mm. It has implications. And uh, you see, this they failed to take advantage of them being a new government. Having found that uh, the previous government had borrowed money expensively, the best thing they should have done is get the Chinese to the drawing table and say, mm. look, can you reduce the interest? Mm. We are interested in this road being done. Mm. And therefore, I don't think that the People's Republic of China would have declined to oblige to work with the current government because the Chinese government always works with successive governments from mm. independence. So that was an opportunity which was missed. Mm. They cancelled the projects. Now we are going back there. Please write off. Please let's get money. We've cancelled this road, but the Chinese companies can come. who we'll fund them internally. That's basically the replacement. And I'm saying that that option is not the best option because we didn't have money. Mm. Uh, you see, uh, Mr. Njekwa says, what is it that you are failing to get to the government? Mm. <laughs> like uh, my late brother, elder brother said, you can only advise people who ask you. Mm. But uh, this is a forum for advice. Mm. There are different ways of advising government. They are listening, and I know they are listening. Mm. They pick issues. Last year, I did tell them, please let us use consortium development funds because the budget is squeezed. Mm. The West is saying, don't do this, don't do this. But as mm. a nation, there are some things which you need to say that this we can't forego. Mm. But when you are at a negotiating table and they tell you, stop funding uh, the small farmers in the villages because that's a drain and you say, hey, I'm quiet because you want to be seen to be a good economist. Mm. That's where we are now. And uh, food is a security item. Mm. And uh, wherever there was a hunger, whether Tunisia, whether wherever, the, the sparks come from hungry stomachs. Mm. When we talk like this, it's not because we want to be at that point. We want mm. to avert that point. Mm. We want to be able to find a solution together 
to have food on the table for the people of Zambia. Mm. If you say, and, and that's where we miss it, if you say uh, that, uh, look, you're talking about organizing cooperatives, can you go to pick and organize? I can organize cooperatives for, for maize, for soya beans, Get every able-bodied Zambian to participate in production. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. I mean, uh, now the MPs are saying, shouldn't we also benefit from Consumers Development Fund? That's what mm. they are asking. It's not their money. They are just the agents of development. Let's pick up this call, President Nawakwe. Hello, good evening. Uh, good evening, Dr. Tio. Good evening, sir. What's your name and where are you calling us from? Mubanga Banda. Yes. This is a wonderful name, it's Mubanga and Banda. How did you find yourself in between two provinces? Anyway, I'm telling you, you can't joke with this man, Chimbuya. You can decide to be Bemba or <laughs> Mr. Banda. Please go ahead and contribute to your nation, to the nation. Mom, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Is there anything that can be done in order to stop the the dollar workers to operate so that the this uh, normal which has been uh, which has been done where well, we're going to say the the consortium will use some of money of which even my grandchildren will be part of the contributing cost. Is there any way that the it can be stopped and uh or through exemption like that? It's a tragedy of our time. Uh, if it's a foreigner, it's good. I, I just uh, uh, remember that uh, I think at uh, Wovis Bay, a Zambian uh, Mr. Ndambo was developing that. They've taken it away from him. Has that been taken away? I think this, they announced that they had taken it back. And uh, you see, I had complained during uh, late Arabic time mm. that there were two Israeli brothers who were here. Mm. Uh, President Mwanawasa had given them Zambia railways and they called it a railway system. They had nothing, they were living in one house. Mm. And we gave them the money to run a railway system. The first thing they did was to sell the wagons and that's how they started getting the money. The next thing we saw was that uh, they were running a consortium to correct trade taxes at the border. Mm. And uh, when President Hakainde took it back, for me, I was quite happy. I was very happy. Mm. When President Sata came in, I went to him and said, Sir, please get back our Zambia Railways. Mm. And he did, because he used to listen. Because you could call him. I mean, you see, <laughs> if there was one person, whom had fought President Marcos, and that was myself. Mm. I, you recall that we were campaigning with the Arab. Mm. I was in uh, Mandevu at that rally. And uh, for all it takes, President Sata, when he came into office, he could still contact those he saw as adversaries. Fish Walela and Daiwe, Ngachi decentralization, Chobe, Chile, Pribulenshi. He always wanted to listen to anyone with a divergent view. Mm. And that marks, that's a mark of a leader. Mm. But when a leader, the intention is to send you to jail, then you've lost it. Mm. So um, 
How can we stop foreigners? We Zambians are just too nice. This can't happen in South Africa. He started by saying, is there a way we can stop the dollar dual carriage way? I mean, the only way is for the president to listen to us because the people who are in the consortium, some of them are his bosom friends. Mm -hmm. So he has a pecuniary interest in it because if you are my friend, I ask for tea, you would not say no. Mm. And some of those funded the, 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 the party, it's like Vedanta. Mm. Vedanta funded UPND. Mm. So when they are saying no, there's no other person, have they advertised? Mm. Have they gone around the world? Copper and cobalt are now the best products in the world. Absolutely. How can you tell me that for Concola Deep you can't find an investor, you go and get a bankrupt uh, investor to come here? I mean, it's because there's uh, an arterial motive. We begin to say this when we see that the person who who is managing our resources is not listening to the people. Mm. So we take this very hard position, praying that he may listen and say, my friends are being too hard. Mm. What is it? Because on these issues, we should be able to sit and discuss, regardless of whichever political divide we are, we are on. We should but, be able to discuss. But He's been in, two, in office for two years. He hasn't called a meeting of the opposition. It's in that meeting that you can share ideas, but he doesn't want to listen. Did you start a, uh, President Satako for the opposition? I, I, I don't know, but he, at least he used to make phone calls to people to be able to... The members of the opposition? Yes, I was in the opposition. Was President Mwanawasa and Levy called Yeah, we used, to, we used to meet. That's how we had the National Constitutional Conference, because he called us mm. and said, uh, this issue of uh, constitutional making, mm. if we don't get together, the NGO will drive the process. Mm. We as politicians must at least have a position. Mm. So, people, you, you go to meetings. You need to, as a leader, <laughs> you need to be able to meet. I always uh, uh, refer to my interaction with uh, the former Prime Minister of Egypt, late uh, Dr. Yusuf Wali, when he said that he, he was chairman of he was Minister of Agriculture, Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of his party. And he said, on issues of agriculture, I don't make decisions alone. I know what I want done, but I call the opposition. Because mm. I would tell them that, look, we need to increase the price of grain. Mm. There's no one member of the opposition who will say no. Mm. Because the people will see that this is the one who is refusing. So, uh, you bounce your ideas on your people. Right now, he would be saying, no, my colleagues, we discussed this issue. We are not saying we govern with him. We just share ideas. Uh, this position which is, uh, the government is taking was the same position. I was one of those people who said... And I want people to remember, I said at that time, when they went for the second euro bond, mm. I said PF was driving us downhill at, in gear eight. <laughs> That's what I said. <clears throat> but when the people call, you know what they say? You mm. supported PF. I said, no. I supported PF in the battle uh, this one versus this one. But on certain policy issues, go to the archives, you'll see my position. I was totally against the contraction of the second euro bond. I was very, very uh, violent on it. And I, I, I discussed in the press, and I recall that my late older brother used to call us for meetings when I broke ranks. That was the last time I was ever invited to Minister of Finance for a sharing of ideas. Let's pick up this call, uh, President Nawako. Hello, good evening. Good evening, you are talking about Mbakani Kwaiti. Wapa, Ronalesa, what's your name and where are you calling us from? Mr. Mwale from Ufrira. Mr. Mwale from Ufrira. How to do we know about the Savare Para? Munishan Mufurilo, at Bunga Nabuchi Pasano. We 
Tu as ça. Yes, pas moi. Je suis Mufundo, Tawafika, I mean, uh, uh, fertilizer, uh, the, the it was, I have not. Ta, ta ila but uh, let's step back. Mm. When did FISIP start? FISIP started with MMT. In mm. fact, I was the first one to confront the International Monetary Fund. After we had done the paperwork and uh, signed and we went for programming. They had said 75% of Zambians are extremely poor. They are living on less than a dollar a day. Mm. That was one clause. You can go back to the record and pick up that memorandum which I signed. In the next sentence, they said, agricultural inputs shall be delivered to the Zambian people on commercial level. So I took the delegation to task. Mm. I said these are 75%, they're extremely poor, and they live in rural areas, mm. and they don't have even a dollar a day. So how do you expect them to buy? At a commercial. At a commercial window. So that's how they said, oh, you want to be Santa Claus, we'll start with a five billion kwach. I, 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 I said, thank God. I fought so hard. At least there's a budget line called five billion kwach. Mm. KK Katerika Lumba increased that to I think 20. Now, what was our idea at the time? Our idea was that this money, you take a farmer, you support them for two to three years. Mm. Fully, you can just start with maybe just 300,000. Mm. You say, each farmer, you're going to do maybe two, three hectares, support them fully. Mm -hmm. The first year, don't collect anything from them. Second year, don't. First year, anyone who want to put a house and maybe put uh, ma masenke. Second year, they may want to buy a scotch cart. Mm. Third year, you tell them, this is the government's very last time to support you as a household. The next year, you are moving to a commercial wind. This is what our friends in Mozambique did. Mm. Now, over time, FISIP has been used as a tool to control people. Mm -hmm. If the president says, I'm going to support one million farmers, and the only thing people can receive is a medal, that's subjugating uh, poverty mm -hmm. to the politics. You know, democracy and poverty don't go together. That's mm. why people are able to buy a vote with a t-shirt or a packet of chibuk. Mm. And therefore, there are some leaders who want to keep their people under perpetual poverty as a way of bondage. Mm. If we truly, as a nation, we want to use agriculture as a tool for development, we'll sit down and devise a viable strategy. I worked with the President Hagainde in, 19, in 20, 2005. We were in an UDA alliance. These are ideas we discussed. I truly honestly thought that his ascendance to power 
would bring a different style of governance, especially where development is concerned. Mm -hmm. But is it following in the same footsteps that were walked by the Britain World Institutions mm -hmm. to keep Africans poor? Mm -hmm. So, when my brother from Fudira says, Tula Ndireniko, eh, Tualanda. But what we need as a people, mm. both the farmers and the government, is to sit down and agree on the way forward. Mm. How long does the taxpayer, how long will the taxpayer continue to sustain Bamwale? Mm. Bamwale kutina umfuana na bonati Bamwale will give you a tractor. But we want you to do a minimum of five hectares. We'll support mm. you year one, year two, year three, year five. Would you agree to buy your own tractor and be on your own? You can work with people and they, you, the country will go forward. Just here in Tanzania, our president in Tanzania who is coming tomorrow, I hope the president will ask him her as to what she has done to improve productivity. What she has done is that she has a program to, Im to get 680,000 youths involved in agriculture. Give them land, give them extension facilities, you know, like they give them. And young people are prepared to work. If mm, you say mm. beef fish farmers, they are prepared to be there. But you go to CEC, they give them monga ni ka leza so. They give you 100,000, go and start a business. What can you start with 100,000? Without mentorship, without, you know, without any supervision, it, we can't succeed. So my suggestion is that going forward, FISIP has been with us for too long. And we are not getting out of poverty. What is it that hasn't been done? Now, the approach of UPND that some people go to the commercial window, and by the way, if I, I, I learned from a friend of mine that the elderly parent was taken off the fee but no, he moved from Nipo. My girl was not to be kept away. Yeah, those complaints have come. They have come from one side. If you were there before PF, you are PF. Get out. Tingenem. That approach is defeatist. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this government should have been. We are farmers. I am a farmer. I'm a keto rancher. I will show you how to keep keto. I will show you how to grow maize the correct way. And I don't want to keep you perpetually sucking. Mm. I want to win you off. So you engage in a program of birth and win off. Even a baby gets wind off. So, but we've never had a strategy to win off our people from depending on just two bags of fertilizer, which doesn't get them anywhere. I want a program myself where, uh, as we put it in our manifesto, you, you, you start three years, you win off people. You can say, you don't have to start with uh, one million, because you start with one million and then you have 300,000 metric tons. Mm. You can start with 300,000 make them really good farmers. Next year, add some. Obviously, you can't abandon the others. You can keep the others on subsistence, and then you are increasing the level of those that are moving from subsistence to maybe some level or even commercial farmers. What is hindering our people is mechanization. Mm. So if you're going to say you are giving 28 million to, to Namshaken, I love Namshaken, you may as well spend four or five million buying tractors. You may also yeah. get five million from each constituency and equip critical hospitals. Yeah, President Nawab, just, uh, just a question. Before, before I ask you this question, I want to let the people of Zambia know, especially Camnet TV viewers, we have uh, Camnet TV by the special grace of God can now be watched not just on DSTV, Topstar, or any other platform. You can watch Camnet TV when you go to download this app that I'm giving you. It's called Limex World TV. Limex World TV. You spell Limex as L I 
M E X. This Limex World TV, World TV, you can download it on Apple uh, phone, you can uh, download it on Samsung, any phone. What this means, um, you can now watch Camnet TV 24 7. You don't have to just watch the live programs, no. 24 7. You can watch this. We've been blessed by the Almighty God that we are now global indeed. So download the app called Limex, L I M E X Y World TV. Limex World TV. If you go even right now, you can watch it on your phone, you can watch it on your laptop, you can watch it on your desktop, you can watch it anywhere in China, in Russia, everywhere in the world. So when you get there, you find that there are over 200 television stations, but you go on that magnifying glass, you just type CAMNET TV, C-A-M-N-E-T. The moment you type that CAMNET TV, it will hit and you click there, you start watching. This is what God has done, uh, President Nawab. God is good. <laughs> He's so good that uh, when you were out in India, you could have been watching this. <laughs> Hello, good evening. Good evening. Yes, sir. What's your name and where are you calling us from? General John calling from Galway. General, you've been away for a long time. Yes, exactly. Out of the country. I haven't heard from you, General, and I was questioning myself where General is. Yes, how is my mother there? I'm fine, thank you very much. Yes, you are a strong mother. I think yes, we hide women like you. Larger can be in other way. <laughs> uh, what I can say of this government is it has let us very much down in everything because uh, you know in government when you have for your protection body, things will be difficult for you. The reason why the Indian is here, they have care of it, they have to turn back from God because they come a lot of things. That's why things are not happening. Mm. People are suffering. People were going to were getting the doctor driver, but they are in nature. People were people were eating three new races, but today people are suffering. They can't afford. So let the government go back to God and repent because while the country is in crisis, because they have taken out from God. That's why, Madam, when you remember, our president said, no, the installation of prayer is useless. Now, questions are simple. A man who is the president of the country, in time was, was declared divine through God. Now, what about the nation of prayer? He was declared by the former president, David Galoum, but it's only God. Who put something in that statement to declare as a national prayer party? In him we said, me, when he was in the opposition, no, I cannot attend a national prayer because it's useless. Which means God is annoyed. That's why this country will have rejected. What I can say to the new John Gaffney Street, go back to God so that God can answer you. That's why everything you can it is difficult that people are suffering because of your doing. Thank you very much. Thank you. President Nawaki, that is General Chongo Kawe, <coughs> one of the ardent viewers of Kamnet Television. He says that this government has gone against God because when the president was in the opposition was saying this is a useless day of prayer. Now that he's a president, he's just admonishing to say, can this government go back to God? What's your view over General Chongo's view? I think you, our ministers, need to, sorry, 
Are you are ministers of the way you need to approach the president mm. uh, and discuss this mm. uh, because um, God has a different way of uh, of managing, helping the leaders manage. Mm. A king is the next to God. Mm -hmm. And he's appointed by God. Mm -hmm. So he must do God's will. Mm -hmm. I was surprised that uh, our, our leader this time said that he was having a national day of prayer with his family and friends. And I said, oh, so we're not his friends. Mm -hmm. The nation is not his family. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was, uh, you know, uh, that wasn't a correct statement that uh, mm -hmm. these people should have put up. But, um, you know, uh, I I think uh, that's a, a territory which mm. I can't uh, myself for uh, I can't myself for comment much. Uh, it's okay, a, so you you are leaving that <laughs> to the us ministers of the that, world. Uh, okay, I hear you. That those things are uh, from the church point of view. General Chongo, you have heard uh, President Nawakwi has declined and she has left that issue of uh, ministering to the President and the UPND from the spiritual point of view. And I think the ministers will step in. Uh, let me pick the text messages, Madam Nawakwi, because uh, Mr. Director, don't put the Oh, no messages? I wonder what could have happened. Even the other time, there were no messages. I think this is a technical challenge. People sh always send messages. Um, when it comes to land, I am also um, concerned, uh, President Nawakwe. I've said here, time and again, if you esteem foreigners above the nationals, will the nation develop? Because uh, definitely, even if somebody is an idiot, given one million dollars, they can do something in the interest of the nation. But when, and these contracts are not beginning <coughs> with UPND, even in the past, I don't know there is this liking for foreigners we think they are better than the nationals. Even before UPND, you go there to ask for money, they would torture you. When we asked the money, uh, President Nawako, to build this church, and ultimately the television station appeared in court three times for defaulting. At the same time, some bankers, they know, we went to the same bank, they know that a white man came here and he got five million dollars from the bank <laughs> and he pretended that he was developing a farm in Mukushi. He ran away. By the time they went to check on him, he left three broken tractors and a truck down. That, you know that story. That is big. And he, he is nowhere to be seen. Here I am. I just borrowed half a million and I appeared in court three times. But some of the people that even tortured me, they are watching this broadcast. Is that fair where you <clears throat> prefer foreigners above your own? I think basically uh, the colonial system left an inferiority complex in us. Mm. Uh, if you are in Ghana, mm. it's Ghanaian first. Ghanaian first. Yeah. And uh, the system that works is... Uh, if, if if you went to Munali, mm. people look you up and say, what are you doing? Mm. I'm a banker here. Can we assist? Mm. Not that they are giving money for free. Tanzania was way behind us, but Tanzania has overtaken us. What mm. is playing there is that it's Tanzanians first. Mm. Tanzanians even, must own the gold mines. Even Ethiopia. Yes, Ethiopia, you can't start a jewelry shop. It belongs to an Ethiopian. You can't start a jewelry shop for gold in Ethiopia. You're a foreigner. No. You can't. But here, and uh, thank you for this question. I've always wondered why we prefer foreigners. 
that same story, I also came across it. There was a farm where a foreigner had borrowed uh, $1.5 million from a, a bank mm. and taken off to go and buy houses in the UK. Mm. The bank only recovered $37,000. When they went on site, there was nothing. Try as a Zambian to go to these banks. Foreigners arrive here at some of these banks mm. with nothing, with just a caravan. Mm. And just by virtue of their complexion, mm. they can be living with a, a father-in-law, like one gentleman I met at a certain bank. He says, I'm from South Africa. I went to Mozambique, but I'm here. Zambia is so good. They've, he even owns a plane. He lives in Kush, a young man. He had nothing, nothing, other than arrive at acquaintances farm, go to a bank. But these are South African banks. If he comes here and says, I'm a South African, they, they help them. Now, mm. for us Zambians, it's so bad. And the issue of land is so critical. Mm. The land laws are allowing our village headmen and our chiefs to pass a large tracts of land to foreigners. foreigners yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, I don't think I can arrive in Rwanda and have oh, 30, 40 hectares you can't. by the river. I can't. You can't. But go to some of these places. A, a village headman has a capacity to give 250 hectares, 1,000 hectares. 5,000. 5,000 hectares. And uh, at least uh, in the past, they would say, uh, you know, let's audit that. I saw the minister saying that there's going to be land audits, but he's uh, focusing on the part of officials who are giving each other two meters, three meters. But minister, Bakalamba, please audit village headmen and chiefs. Mm. Because this country has been parceled out. Mm. Huge tracts of land. And the job of the Minister of, of Lands is to simply authorize the titles. So land is finishing, especially these young chiefs who have come tomorrow. Mm -hmm. They want to catch up. And they are selling land like they are selling tute. In fact, somebody said to President Nawakwe, I think you are not chef in Zambia. No, no, no. no. I, I think, I think, I think <laughs> the, 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 look, there are some chiefs who don't sell land. Mm. And there are some chiefs who are very strict. Mm. But honestly, me, if I had a way, which I, I may not be authorized, I would even like to address the House of Chiefs. But, but this, if, if, uh, uh, if, I, if I said I want to do this, you see what would happen to the But court. besides Chiefs President Nawakwe, I'm talking about projects. Yeah, projects. Giving projects to foreigners. Yes, like uh, uh, someone was uh, asking that uh, the consortium for the border has been given to foreigners. You see why they give to foreigners? Mm. The indirect you're going to get shares from them. It's a scheme. It's a business scheme. Mm. This is serious. Um, <laughs> Someone said jokingly that uh, there is one president in East Africa. Mm. Someone was accused of uh, stealing money from government, but that person built uh, houses and hotels within the city. So the anti-corruption reported to the president that the money we are tracing has been traced to this young man. He's a government official. And he says, okay, advise him that I want to have lunch with him. Mm. And when this person went to lunch with this president, he says, congratulations. Mm. At least you didn't externalize the money. Mm. You built the hotel here, you've created employment. But next time, don't steal from government. Anyway, you've already left and fired you. Mm. <laughs> you understand? Here, yeah. it's so useless that this government can even go looking for a vehicle which was bought in 2016 and is on concrete. <laughs> <laughs> a, it's on concrete and they, they say, no, this vehicle was bought by PA for you. Can you imagine that? Mm. You waste state resources mm. to go and tow a vehicle which someone has just left on concrete because it's not repairable. 
I mean, I think it is so trivial and petty. Mm. It's happening. Mm. It's happening, and uh, we are not concentrate. Why, why go to Bowman and say this house? He's built it there. Mm. He would die and leave it there in the neighborhood. Mm. Now you are going to get all these assets from Zambians, mm. which is Zambian you and I has money mm. to buy Bowman's house. Mm. It will be someone from Lebanon, someone from Turkey, someone from India. It will not be a Zambian. So we are disempowering Zambians. But my advice to the president is that if I were in his shoes, I would have said, you have assets which are beyond your income. Can you declare and I'll ask you to pay taxes on it? Mm. And he would have collected lots of money from people he suspects mm. to have proceeds which are beyond their income. Mm. Because if you find someone with a, a, a house worth $2 million, you say, okay, we are charging you 20% income on it or 30% income. Even give a, a friendly figure so that they pay. Mm. The amount of money, the civil servants, the houses they built in Chalala. Mm. And where, also, where, where, but he's just following politicians. He doesn't follow civil servants. Because when he follows politicians, he thinks he's popular. But he's not he enhancing the income for the state. So for, as amnesty, my suggestion is that stop following people. Just to say, those who have assets which they can't explain, come forward. We'll give you amnesty. You pay so much income tax on it or so much whatever tax. But and that's the way you, you raise money and create peace as well, as well as not to transfer these assets into foreign hands. The entire Cairo Road and Chachacha is going to be owned by foreigners because other than the president, who is the richest man in this country, who else mm -hmm. has money to pay to purchase uh, 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 these assets? It will only be foreigners. Mm -hmm. And uh, why would uh, the government take away York Farm, which was a university farm, mm. and invest it into foreigners? That's a space. Has that been taken away? They are advertising it to be sold as NAPSA. And NAPSA jointly owned that with the, with the investor at some time. I don't know when the investor disinvested their, their shares. But the point I'm raising is that that empty space is so lucrative for government. Sana. It is. Uh, and NAPSA. You could do a joint development with NAPSA and government. But if you advertise for 20 million, it will be someone from Lebanon, someone from America, someone from Hawaii. So look, we hate ourselves so much. Mm. Eh? We hate ourselves so much that uh, all we want to do is create poverty mm. for ourselves and enrich others. People come here, some of these rich people funding UPND, they were collecting mushrooms in Serenje. Mm. I know them. They came here from their countries with nothing. Mm. They were empowered during privatization. They know some people. They got Lenko. And they are rich people. You give them university land. Honestly, you give them university land. Mm. And say, that's public land. Mm. President Nawaku, it's so hurting. And um, I must say, like you are saying, some um, precisely 21 years ago, I befriended somebody from uh, Lebanon because he was stuck here. He ran away from war and he landed in Zambia with uh, $10,000. He's my friend about 21 years ago. Today is one of the wealthiest and he keeps on saying, you know, my friend, you can't leave Zambia. Zambia is heaven because here we make money I never thought I would make. and. He gets contracts from the government, of course, which I've never gotten. I'm not talking about from UPND. I'm talking about 21 years ago. Of course, it has been a pattern. You know, it's been a pattern, and I don't know when. Um, 
the government of Zambia will start uh, empowering Zambians. When you come, become president, yes. what will you do Me, for Zambians? When I was the Minister of Agriculture, mm. that's the time there was a massive migration of people from south of the Kafue River. Mm. They stopped parking at Minister of Agriculture. I told them I don't like caravan farmers. And I was supported by our indigenous Zambian farmers of European origin. They said, this is good. You know, the, the late Ron Randres. Mm. Because these people, they used to say, they were, they were very derogatory about me. I said, you can't come here with a caravan and I give you land. And from my land, you begin to boast and humiliate our people. I said, no. I used to say, no caravan farmers. They said, no, this woman is a racist. I said, let me be racist for my country. Because as Minister of Agriculture, you can't go around inviting people to go, come to Zambia, come and farm. No, we have, what is it that we don't have? It's mm. the resources. We have the land, the water. So let our leaders provide. And it's not like we don't have money. If you can dish out 28 million to a constituency, you can use 2 million, 3 million to buy tractors for that mm. constituency. You can do irrigation. You can support your people. Mm. But uh, the orientation is different. So me, I don't like a caravan farmers. Mm. I don't like people who come here with patapata, even in the emerald industry. Mm. The richest emerald miners came here with patapata. Mm. They don't even know how to write English, but the richest will go even... Uh, it's so annoying. You say you're annoyed. It's so annoying. You find we even provide police to guard their home states. God forbid. Uh, President Nawaku, I'm so grateful that you made time to come. Uh, come the TV is your home, and anything we can do to build our nation to support our president which i still feel that i know from the press point of view you rub each other from the other side but your ideas if you can just call him even if he doesn't call you let's put our things together our house in order this is our nation you've been minister of finance minister of energy minister of agriculture that wealth of information that you have let it not just vanish like the wealth of information our father, Dr. Magande, had and Amusa Mwanamwambo. Let's, may their souls rest in peace. Let's put our house in order. Zambia is a better country and we were born for greatness. Thank you for making appearance on Kamnet TV. Thank you very much. I just want <coughs> to close by saying it's not always that you work with the president. Mm. The best platform is the ministers. The ministers. I had the habit of calling ministers and what, but they dare not pick up these phone calls mm. because they'll be talking to the opposition. So this current government, mm. even ministers are not available for simple discussion. Oh. So that's the status, and I think that they are the ones who need to be advised because they need to continue holding on to power. But since they don't want to be advised, 2024 is coming, mm. the people are hungry, this government is outgoing. 2024, 2026? 2026. 2026. Mm. No, that's unconstitutional, 2024, but 2026. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, <laughs> thank uh, you President so Nawakwe. Once again, dear Kamnet TV viewers, have you seen uh, this uh, phone? I'm here. I'm on Limex World TV. L-I-M-E-X World TV. If you punch in Kamnet TV, even after this, you'll be watching 24-7, not only live services. So when you're in China, when you're in Russia, somebody, I met somebody from the UK uh, today, he just said, Pastor Chilova, I watch Kamnet TV all the time. So when I gave him this app, he says, you have helped me so much because there's no going live only, but 24-7 you watch this broadcast. To our leaders, like the previous governments, as I pointed, PF left this burden 
of uh, um, euro bond which you are grappling with and even you UPND don't leave any baggage let's work together so that we can develop this nation I've been your host Pastor Moses Chilva on behalf of my wife Pastor Victoria Chilva on behalf of our able director Isaac Chivita and uh, all the Kamne TV viewers and members of staff, the news crew, you are the best. And I'm so grateful to President Nawakwe for making all the time, whenever we call you, you are here. May God bless you. Thank you. For One day I live to see a female president. Not too far off. Not too far off. Yes. May God bless you. Thank you. Well, keep on watching. Kamne TV, because Kamne TV is not just another channel. Bye-bye.